You get up in the morning and you rush your kids to school and yourself to work. From there, you hustle to meet work deadlines and to push projects through. Then after work, you summon a little more energy to push through errands, activities, and maybe a healthy-ish meal before you collapse at the end of the day. Where during that day are you supposed to invest in real estate? Really, how's a person with a full-time job supposed to make progress as an investor? There are actually some benefits to investing while working. I wanna give you a few helpful ideas and some hope in the rest of this video. If we haven't met yet, my name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach, and this channel is all about helping you get out of the financial grind so you can do more of what matters. First, let me say that there's no magic wand that can give you more time. But the closest thing I've found to magic in the adult world is leverage. You're probably already familiar with financial leverage. For example, you don't need $200,000 cash to buy a property whose price is $200,000. You just need twenty dollars to $40,000 for the down payment, and then you can borrow the balance from a mortgage lender. A mortgage is financial leverage because you're able to lift the deal by using other people's money, also known as OPM. And it gets even better with a rental property because you also use the tenant's rent to pay your mortgage payment each month. But in your case, you also need time leverage. Because you have a limited number of hours available each week, you also need to use other people's time, known as OPT, to make progress with your investing. Robert Kiyosaki talks about this idea in his cash flow quadrants. On the left side, you have E for employee and S for self-employed. In both cases, there's no leverage because you trade your time for dollars. Even a highly paid doctor trades her time for dollars, it's just a very high rate. But on the right side of the quadrant, you have B for business owners and I for investors. In these cases, the business owner or the investor leverages their time by paying other people, usually the E or the S, to do work for them. And they use a salary, a fee, or maybe even a share of their profits to pay them. This form of leverage is what you have to get good at if you want to be successful as an investor while working a full-time job. One of my favorite sports coaches of all time was UCLA basketball coach John Wooden, and he once famously said the main ingredient of stardom is the rest of your team. In other words, if you want to have real estate investing success, you need to build a strong team. So what kind of team do you need to build? Well, it really depends on the strategy in real estate that you choose, and you have three main choices. The first strategy is just owning real estate directly. So either you or a company that you own holds the title to the real estate. With this option, you have to build your own team of independent contractors to help you find, finance, and manage your property. If you want to buy a rental property, you'll probably have to hire at a minimum a real estate agent, a property manager, and a mortgage lender. The good part is these first team members can help you find all the other team members you need, like an insurance agent, a closing attorney, and repair contractors. This process of helping you build a team to own properties directly is the primary one that I teach in my course, Real Estate Deal School, that comes out twice per year, and I'll have a link below in the video description if you're interested. But there's also another similar option, which is to buy turnkey real estate properties. In this case, a lot of the team building and the process of buying the property has been done for you. Roofstock.com is an example of one type of company that offers more of these turnkey type properties. I'll get into the pluses and minuses of turnkey investing in another video. For now, let me continue with the second strategy that will give you leverage of other people's time, and that is becoming a passive or a limited partner. In the first strategy, you hired other people, but you were still in charge. It was kind of like you were the quarterback and you had a team of supporting players around you. But it's also possible to let someone else be the quarterback. As a passive or limited partner, your primary role is to invest the money into a deal while other people invest their time and energy. There are several different ways to structure this type of strategy. One structure is to keep things on a small scale, perhaps with one active partner and one passive partner who get together to buy a piece of real estate. If both partners have equity, meaning they each get a share of the profits from the property, then you'd usually see this type of partnership put into a legal entity like an LLC or a corporation. But you could also do a slight variation and just let the money partner make a loan, a private loan, to the active investor. Instead of receiving profits, the private lender would receive interest. In either case, this can be a win-win because the entrepreneur gets to do deals with little or none of their own money, and the passive partner or the passive investor gets to do deals with little or none of her own time. 
I've done many successful deals as both the entrepreneur, the active investor, and the more passive money partner. The biggest challenge is always finding a partner that you can trust and that you like doing business with. But if you're willing to network and meet other investors, this is definitely doable. It can be a great strategy. Another version of a passive partnership is something called a syndication. It's basically a larger scale partnership with a larger number of passive money partners. You still have a quarterback called a syndicator or a general partner, but because there's a larger amount of money from all these passive partners, you can usually buy larger deals like commercial properties or larger multifamily apartments. Unfortunately, to do a syndication deal like this, federal and state laws normally require you to be what's called an accredited investor, which means you make over a certain amount of income or you have over a certain amount of wealth. I've personally been exploring doing syndication deals just like this on an online platform called CrowdStreet. I'll have a link in the video description if you're interested. Whether you're a passive money partner on a small scale, like on a deal by deal basis, or on a larger scale, like with syndications, they're both great ways to leverage your time if you're working a full-time job. But don't forget this, being a passive money partner is not without risk. When you leverage other people's time in this way, you're giving up a lot of control. It's kind of like you're getting in a financial boat where someone else is the captain. If this is an experienced, trustworthy captain, then getting to the other destination across that ocean is going to happen just fine, even if you have stormy seas. But with the wrong captain, stormy seas and other problems can sink your financial ship. It has happened with a lot of syndications in the past. That's why as a passive money partner, you have to do a lot of due diligence on the front end before you turn over all your money to a general partner who's going to have control of your deal. And be patient until you find the right person who you trust. The third and final real estate strategy that you can use to leverage your time while you're working a full-time job is to simply invest in something called a real estate investment trust, also known as a REIT. A REIT is similar to a mutual or an index fund, but instead of owning stock and companies, a REIT owns pieces of real estate. Compared to the other two strategies, buying a REIT can be done with the least amount of time and hassle. You will need to do some research on the front end to decide whether you want to buy a REIT that owns a specialty part of the real estate market, for example, a REIT that owns all industrial real estate, or a more broadly focused REIT like the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, which owns a lot of other REITs so that it has a broad exposure to the overall real estate market. Buying REITs is definitely not my specialty, but if you have a very limited amount of time and you still want exposure to real estate investing, this could be something you want to check out. No matter which of these strategies you use to leverage your time, whether that's building your own team and buying real estate directly or becoming a passive money partner or just buying REITs, there will still be some investment of time you have to make on the front end. Building relationships with people and learning something new is not something you can do overnight. So how do you make that work? The full-time workers who I've seen successfully invest in real estate have really just made it a priority. They schedule real estate investing into their life just like they would an important doctor's appointment. But I don't mean this has to be a sacrifice, like giving up something important in your life so that you have to do real estate investing. If real estate investing feels like a chore, it's probably not the right approach for you. Learning and getting better at real estate investing won't always be easy, but it should feel like a challenging puzzle or a game. It should be something that you look forward to at the end of your workday, like other people look forward to entertainment. In other words, the people who have a full-time job and really stick with real estate investing find a way to blur the line between work and play. And to get you started on this fun path to real estate investing, I want to recommend my next video, which is all about running the numbers so that you can evaluate a real estate investment. But don't worry, this isn't about complicated math. My approach is something you can do on the back of a napkin or an envelope. You can check out the video above me here, or I also have a link in the video description. Thanks again for watching. My name is Chad Carson. You can also call me coach, and this channel is all about helping you get out of the financial grind so that you can do more of what matters. See you in the next video.